It is now my pleasure to introduce our student speaker, Nika Carillo. Nika is a great. Nika is a graduating fourth year medical student. Nika's family immigrated from the Philippines to the Bay Area where she was born and raised. She completed her bachelor's degree in biological sciences and post baccalaureate studies at the University of California, Irvine. She has been significantly involved with advocating for the Filipino medical community. Here at UC Davis, she was co-director for one of our student-run clinics that provides primary care to Filipino veterans and immigrants. And Nika was also co-president of the Filipino uh, Americans in Medicine student organization. We will lose you a little bit going forward because you will return home this summer to begin your in internal medicine residency at Kaiser Oakland. Please welcome Nika Kari. Thank you for the introduction. You know, I was talking to my classmates backstage and I told them how nervous I was gonna be. And I thought I was going to be, and I was right. <laughs> I'm pretty terrified. My speech is a little longer, so just hold tight with me. Okay, it is truly a privilege to be in front of all our loved ones and our supportive faculty and staff. To all my classmates, congratulations, we did it. We finished medical school, but more importantly, we all passed T2R. T2R, T2R. <laughs> Special shout out to Molly Fensterwald. No, not you, Chris Migdal, please sit down. <laughs> if you know, you know. Word on the street is Molly honored and received a letter of distinction for T2R. Please give Molly a round of applause. Since this is my first time delivering a commencement speech, I asked my trusted classmates for advice. Claudia, Michelle, JL, and Aaron Brown all said, just be yourself. Challenge accepted. <laughs> On April 15, 2016, I went to the small, super low-key festival, um, music festival in the desert. It's called Coachella. Some of you might have heard of it. Coachella! Coachella! <laughs> like I said, it's very low-key. <laughs> While I was there, it happened to be the weekend before one of our biggest exams. As everyone is freaking out, one of my classmates, you know who you are, Aaron Vera, <laughs> posted on Facebook, feeling like you don't have it in you to study for the exam? Just remember, Nika is at Coachella. <laughs> Hashtag check that snap story. He wasn't lying. So I came back on Monday, took the exam, and was proclaimed as the girl who passed. <laughs> they painted a portrait of me, framed it, and put it on the third floor next to Dr. Freischlag. <laughs> Jokes aside, I am proud to say I'm graduating from UC Davis School of Medicine. The first line of our mission statement reads, to provide excellent learner-centered education to a diverse body of medical students. We truly pride ourselves on diversity here at UC Davis. On our stage, we have individuals from different cultural and linguistic backgrounds, disadvantaged backgrounds, underrepresented minorities. Some are married, some have children, some are still on Tinder. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> we have Golden State Warriors fans. Go Dubs! Yeah! We have Sacramento Kings fans. Hey, Connor, must be hard. <laughs> and we have one poor Houston Rockets fan. Maybe next year, Hassan, but probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. We have, we have amazing men in our class, but I do want to say we set a record for the highest percentage of females at more than 60%. Yeah. But there is one thing that unites us all, and that is crippling student loans. <laughs> they won't stop laughing. 
This is one of the few times we'll all have our loved ones together. Families, I'm positive that you have been a crucial part of our success. This, the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child, and in our case, a physician. My family would agree that it took at least 20 villages in my case. They're all back there. To all our families, thank you for supporting us during the long hours, clinical rotations, and countless exams. I think I speak for all my fellow classmates when I say that exams are a necessary evil. We have taken a myriad of them. Each had a grade, number, or percentage associated with it. We carry the weight of that number, good or bad, on our, shoul on our shoulders. Unfortunately, we subconsciously use these numbers to assess our capability, not only as future physicians, but as individuals. On this stage, I am so proud to stand with such a hardworking and brilliant group of students who overcame every exam necessary to graduate. Yeah. And with that statement, I have a confession. I failed the same medical exam twice. A passing grade was necessary for me to transition from my third to fourth year of medical school. I thought about the repercussions, like not graduating with my class and not matching into residency. At this point, my greatest insecurities had reached the surface and I felt like I did not belong. I began to question everything I had accomplished up to that point. There was a persistent, internalized fear of being exposed as a fraud. In medical school, there is a term we use to define the sentiment called imposter syndrome. This term embodies the duality of medical education. There is a consistent need for students to exude flawlessness and excellence while concealing what does not meet the standards of perfection. Earlier, I stated it takes a village to raise a physician, and at this time, I couldn't turn to my village, my roommates, classmates, friends, or family. I hid my failure because I felt truly like an imposter. And unfortunately, my fear of inadequacy came into existence and I did not pass my remediation. After two unsuccessful attempts, I knew I had to change something. I thought back, told myself, I probably should have just gone to Coachella. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I finally accepted what had occurred and became more proactive and less reactive. First, I did what everyone avoids doing, taxes. <laughs> I'm just kidding, self-reflection. <laughs> I realized that this was something I could not do unsupported, so I built my village again. I confided in those who believed in me. Being honest with myself and reaching out to others made me feel vulnerable, but it was in that moment that I felt liberated as I owned up to my shortcomings. I was less of an imposter and more of a human being. And spoiler alert, I am the girl who passed again. <laughs> so what have I learned from this experience? The first thing I learned was I am not alone. We all have our shortcomings. I failed the same exam twice. I also forget to brush my teeth at night. And I'm always late. <laughs> My parents are probably nodding their head right now in agreement, but mom, it comes from somewhere. <laughs> I hear her laughing. <laughs> My classmates have shared their shortcomings with me as well. Some were rejected from medical school once, even twice before attending UC Davis. Others failed multiple classes during their high school and undergraduate careers, and yet they still stand before me. Our former, first lady, our, former, our former first lady, Michelle Obama, who obtained her law degree from Harvard, had failed her first attempt at the bar exam, and I think she ended up pretty okay. <laughs> J.K. Rowling was on the brink of homelessness as a newly divorced single parent. It was this life-altering struggle that gave her the resilience to write the first installation of Harry Potter. If you guys haven't heard of it, great series, highly recommend. Despite these experiences, both women are still highly influential role models. The second thing I learned, when you encounter failure, change your approach without changing your goal. 
In the words of Facebook COO Sheryl Sandberg, the metaphor for a career is no longer a ladder. It is a jungle gym for growth. Move sideways, down, on, and off. Our jungle gym was medical school. Our goal was obtaining an MD. Their journey was not a predictable straight path to success, but one with forks in the road that led to the unknown. We did not let this discourage us from moving forward. It is a common belief that failure is the rate limiting step. Rather, it is a necessary path on the pa is a necessary step on the path towards your destination, not an alternative to success. The last thing I learned. To all the dreamers and overachievers, realize that failure is not meant to be withstood in silence. It is a shared responsibility. Throughout medical school, I relied on my villages and those who I knew were invested in my success. You would not be here without the help of your loved ones, whether it be a brother or sister, mother or father, cousin, best man or maid of honor. And, now, and how can I forget our dogs? Shout out to Winston and Lucy. <laughs> and they too have struggled. Though it may be a completely different circumstance, I promise you they shared a similar sentiment. I really hope this speech provides a platform for everyone to share both their successes and failures with one another. And now to my classmates and future doctors. We have committed to being lifelong learners and one of the greatest teachers in life is failure. When you reflect on day one of medical school till now, be proud of everything that happened in between. And as you continue on a path, on a new path in your careers, I hope you remember these three lessons when you face adversity. One, you're not alone, everyone fails. Two, change your approach without changing your goal. Three, speak your truth and turn to your village. For those moments that you feel like an imposter again, do not ask for a lighter load, but a stronger back. Remember that to err is to be human, but to learn and persevere is what will help us into empathetic and compassionate physicians. Definitely UC Davis thing. <laughs> I'm almost done. I will say that given the state of our current society, it appears that we have more division than unity, more differences than similarities, and more hate than hope that although we're not all first-generation college students, our first languages were different, we come from different socioeconomic backgrounds, immigrated from different countries, we still share the same formative and humanizing experiences and emotion. Although we truly embody diversity here at UC Davis, it is through the shared sentiments during both struggle and triumph, we are more alike than we are different. To the class of 2019, here we are. I've never seen you guys party as hard as you did last Wednesday. <laughs> and that's a lot coming from me. We will certainly miss being medical students, said no one ever. <laughs> These are our last moments together, all in one room, and in a few moments, we'll all be physicians together. It has been my absolute privilege to be your classmate and friend. Congratulations to you all. Thank you for listening.